Let's take another look at why we should not do that type of canceling. Why the answer stayed as x minus 3 over x plus 4, and we did not cancel the x's. Well, first of all, when we do canceling, we're canceling factors, things that are involved in a multiplication. Neither of these x's, this is not an x times 3 and an x times 4. If it was multiplication, we could cancel those factors, but they're not in a multiplication numerator or denominator, so they're technically not factors, and they should not be canceled. But let's work in this other idea where we'll get the same result evaluating an expression before it's simplified as we would after it's simplified. So let's try a few evaluating problems. Evaluating this expression when x equals 4 will give us 4 minus 3 over 4 plus 4. That's a 1 eighth. Now let's try if x equals 2. 2 minus 3 over 2 plus 4 is giving us a negative 1 sixth. And if we did the type of canceling where we canceled those x's and said it equaled negative 3 fourths, we can see a problem. Negative 3 fourths is not what we get when we did our evaluating. That's a way to show that that would be a bad way to cancel. We do not want to cancel that, and it would be left as x minus 3 over x plus 4. The type of canceling we could do would be here we could cancel x's, because the x's are both factors. They're both involved in a multiplication, 3 times x and 4 times x. We'll check out this idea again. If we do our evaluating, this one is 3 times 4 over 4 times 4, that's 12 sixteenths. If x equals 2, we'll have 3 times 2 over 4 times 2, that's 6 eighths. Each of these fractions simplifies to 3 fourths, the same result we would get from canceling those x's. So we're going to cancel x's that are involved in a multiplication, not x's that are involved in an addition. And if you're ever unsure, there's a, a few steps we can take to verify that we have done correct simplifying, or at least show that we have not done correct simplifying. But we'll just emphasize the right way to do it and try to make sure that we always just go for the right way to do things. Here's another example for you to try, and I'm showing you I'm serious about you should have smooth factoring before you get to rational expressions. So this might look uh, a little overwhelming at first. Remember our main idea is about factoring, that you'll look for a GCF first, and then we'll see what sort of other types of patterns we have that we can factor. So uh, pause the video, take a few minutes on this one that we're going to simplify. So we'll do factor, then cancel, and come back, and then we'll look at the answer. Simplifying this expression is starting with the factor. The numerator is 2x to the third plus 12x squared plus 16x. There's a GCF first, a 2x we can factor out of each term. Left over is a trinomial that we can factor more. It's 2x times x plus 2 times x plus 4 as our factored numerator. Next is the denominator. Let's factor the Looking for the GCF first, we're finding 8xy. We can bring out from each of those two terms. And left over in parentheses, we have x minus 3. So I'd like to rewrite this original rational expression, rewrite numerator and denominator, denominator in factored form, and then we'll look for canceling. The binomial factors, x plus 2 and x plus 4 and x minus 3, we don't have any canceling that we'll be able to do with our binomial factors. But don't forget about the coefficients and any variables that we have that are flying solo, not grouped in parentheses with a constant. So the 2 over 8, we can do some canceling there. The x over x, for sure, those can get wiped out. The 2 over 8 will leave us with a 1 over 4. And that's all the canceling we can do. So just a little bit of cleanup for our final answer. Left over from the numerator, a 1 times, and that 1 times got left out. We have our two binomial factors from the numerator, x plus 2 times x plus 4. From the denominator, 4 times y, and this binomial factor, x minus 3. 
There's our simplified answer. Sort of a tricky one, but just remember what our steps are for simplify. Factor, then cancel. Let's go through several common occurrences that you will encounter when simplifying rational expressions. Let's first talk about this one, x minus 2 over x minus 2. A couple of ideas come to mind. One idea is, well, this is a fraction where numerator and denominator are equal. And whenever that happens, the fraction equals 1, like 5 over 5 equals 1. 80 over 80 equals 1. For the same reasons, an x minus 2 over x minus 2 should equal 1. End of story. A couple other, other ideas we could put to use would be, well, can we factor? There's no way we can factor x minus 2, so I just have it in parentheses. And in the denominator, we cannot factor x minus 2 further. I see the same binomial factor, x minus 2, so I cancel it from top and bottom. And I want to re emphasize this point, that if we cancel away everything from numerator and denominator, there's technically a 1 left behind. This is like a 1 over 1 equals 1. A couple different ideas for us to observe that a, a rational expression where numerator and denominator match, it equals 1, just like any other numerical fraction. Next, simplify 10 plus 5x over 12x plus 24. Actually, this is a good one for you to pause, take a couple minutes and work this one. So go ahead and do that, and then come back and we'll look at the answer. Ten plus five x. Let's factor the numerator first, thinking about GCF. Always our first thought with factoring is GCF. From the numerator, we have a five we can bring out. Left over in parentheses, 2 plus x, and we cannot factor that binomial any further. In the denominator, 12 is our GCF with x plus 2. So the next thought is, after factor, to cancel. What can we cancel? Is there anything to cancel? Well, let's look at these binomial factors. Are they equal? Are they the same? 2 plus x and x plus 2. Since it's addition, they are equal. We can do addition in any order. So we can definitely cancel those two binomial factors, the 2 plus x and the x plus 2. And our simplified answer is 5 twelfths.